Hello and welcome to EngPhys 3 BA3 Lecture 16, Op Amp Filters and Transistor Transistor Logic. First thing we're going to be doing is talking about filters and looking at uh, analyzing a bunch of different filters, some of which include op amps. If we just take uh, these two filters, these are both low-pass filters. One of them involves an inductor, the other one doesn't. It just cascades two stages of RC filters. The cascaded RC filters don't do much better than just the uh, than just a single RC filter, but the RLC filter allows more control over things. We're going to look at more detail of, uh, of how exactly we get this. This is not the same slope in the for the RC filter if we just take the same filter and cascade, cascade it there. It actually moves the 3 dB point if we do that, and it's a bit complicated to analyze combined filters because the second one loads the first one. We'll look at this in detail. Now, with some op amps, you can get much better filters without even using inductors. And that's good because inductors are very difficult to build in microelectronics. So here's here are some designs of, um, of filters using op amps. So the first one is a low pass filter. And to get a high pass, you would just uh, switch position R1 with R2 with, uh, with C1 rather, and R2 with C2. So just swap those around and then it's a high pass filter. And this one with kind of a combination of both of those things going on is behaving like a band pass filter. We can analyze these with all of the math that we already know and circuit for circuit analysis and find that the response of the low pass filter is this. The response of the high pass filter is this and the response of the bandpass is this. Now, uh, let's look at an example. Prove that the circuit shown here acts as a differentiator. This is something you've already done. Just by analyzing it as a, as a regular op amp, you can find that the output goes like the derivative of the input. Prove that if you reverse the position of resistor and capacitor, it acts as an integrator. Nothing too special there. Now let's get into some filter design. So suppose uh, here we're going to do a bunch of different analysis or analyses. We're going to say we have a system that has two signals, a data signal at 50 hertz and a noise signal at 60 hertz. And we want to keep as much of this as possible and get rid of as much of this as possible. These are pretty close in frequency though, so we're going to have to be careful about what kind of filter we design and we're, we're probably going to uh, need a pretty good filter to get rid of this while keeping this. So for all of these, we're going to set the 3 dB frequency at 55 hertz, midway between these, and explore how the response here compares to the response here. So first, let's just use an RC low pass filter. And the transfer function we know is 1 over j omega RC plus 1, or you can rederive that if you like. The gain would be the absolute value of this. So the 3 dB frequency where the gain is 1 over root 2 lets us solve for what RC needs to be. Substituting all of that in, we come up with our frequency response of this filter as follows. Just looking at the gain, not necessarily the phase. So at 50 hertz, we keep 74% of the signal. And at 60 hertz, we keep 68% of the signal. In other words, the, the noise is only reduced by a slight fraction more than the signal is. So just one RC filter is not going to cut it for doing what we want to reject this and keep all of this. Okay, so now let's look at some more advanced filters. What if we take two of these filters and we cascade them? Being careful to adjust the 3 dB frequency. It's complicated because this loads this filter. So the first filter now, its uh, voltage here is based on a divider between this resistor and then this in parallel with these two, as you know. Calculating all of that, we have the gain here. And so, uh, solving for the 3 dB frequency lets us figure out what RC needs to be. Substituting that in, here's our response. And then we can sub in the frequency of 50 hertz and 60 hertz, checking also at 55 hertz that we've got a gain of 70.7%, or 1 over root 2. Now we've got 74% and 67.5%, which is almost the same as just one RC filter. Okay, that's no good. Now, uh, note that if, uh, if you allow this filter to have different RC values, 
then if you choose these to have a much higher impedance than these ones, then you can cascade the filters without this really loading that because this in parallel with these two will just be this since these are much higher impedance. Okay, uh, and furthermore, since the frequency that the low pass filter, the cutoff frequency of, the, of a low pass filter is based on one over RC, as long as RC is the same value for each of these filters, and R and R is much bigger, C is much smaller, then we could cascade these without having to worry about this loading this and have them both have the same 3 dB frequency and then together we'll have the same 3 dB frequency. So if they're the same values, then the 3 dB frequency of say this RC by itself is different than the 3 dB frequency of the macking together. But if this filter doesn't load this one, then the combined 3 dB frequency can be the same as their individual ones. And that makes filter design a little bit easier. So analyzing that example, we come up with this transfer function, one over one plus omega RC all squared. And substituting into that, we get a little bit better performance. This is kind of the ideal RC RC filter case. Now what about this RLC low pass filter? Now we've got a, another parameter. So uh, just saying what the 3 dB frequency is, is not gonna constrain things enough. So let's, uh, let's also, let's just arbitrarily set RC equal to one over omega C, and we'll look at some of the consequences of this uh, later. Then omega C is the 3 dB frequency as long as this condition on L is the case. So what we get is a fair bit better performance. We've got 90% at 50 hertz and 57% at 60 hertz. So we've rejected a lot more of the 60 hertz signal compared to the 50 hertz signal. Okay, now in the lab for op amps, we looked a little bit at filtering and this is a one op amp uh, first, first order active filter. So it's called a first order filter because if you look at its transfer function, then you find that uh, as omega gets large, when we're in the, since this is a low pass, we're in the part where we're dropping off with increasing omega, then it goes proportional to one over omega. So omega to the power of one in the denominator. That means it's first order. You can look at some of the filters we've been dealing with before and see how they compare. So this cascaded RC filter, for instance, had a transfer function that went kind of like one over omega to the uh, root of omega to the four. So this is a second order filter. And so was the ideal RC filter, one over one plus omega squared. So that's gonna go like one over omega squared, second order filter. The regular RC non-cascaded is a first order. And the RLC filter is a second order filter. So the higher the order of the filter, the faster the drop off is gonna be. Even though this is a second order filter and so was the cascaded RC filter, we'll see why the RLC filter was kind of cheating in, uh, in its response numbers when we look at the complete frequency response later. Anyway, this op amp has exactly the same transfer function as the RC filter. So the only real advantage that it uh, well, besides being inverting, so it does some different things with phase. But the big advantage of this is that it has great gain, uh, great impedance characteristics. So if we cascade a couple of these together, then we get the ideal RC filter behavior. Although we did need a lot more components to build it, like we needed this op amp, so we've got some active stuff going on. Now, what about the second order single op amp filters that we had in the lecture here? The fact that they're second order tells you something about what the response is going to be without using an inductor and without using an additional op amp even just some uh, some extra resistors and capacitors we can get a second order filter that has great impedance characteristics and we can even adjust uh, rf1 and rf2 to give us some gain if we want that so here's our here's our gain if we've set that we're going to have um, a gain of one at low frequency that constrains what x is so we get this transfer function. And 
these characteristics, which doesn't seem all that great. It does exactly the same as the ideal cascaded low pass filter. One thing that's nice about this is that we can easily cascade additional stages and know that they don't load each other. So this just squares the, uh, the transfer function. No more root in the denominator there. And now we've got a fourth order filter. Okay. So to really get a feel for this, let's look at the frequency response by plotting it. So here is a frequency response. We've got the uh, response, the gain on a linear scale versus the frequency on a log scale. And you can see all of our filters here. So the higher the order the filter, the bigger the slope. And then what, look at this blue one. This is what the RLC filter is doing. So uh, we, we said on this one that we wanted a response of one at 60, at, uh, at 50 hertz, and we got that. But look, we're on the trailing edge of this, of this uh, function here. So if we said that we didn't care about having a DC gain of one with the op amp filters, we could have done some similar uh, kind of behavior where this goes up and then scales over to there for the op amp filter if we allow that X to be something that's not equal to one. The difficulty with one of these filters with the the RLC filter and why it's maybe not as good as we originally thought is that if the actual data signal is a little bit lower frequency or a little bit higher frequency, then we have a very different gain. So it's on a sharp slope point of the gain. It's true that we reject the noise a fair bit more than these other filters do, but that uh, that comes at a price and the price is amplifying noise at a lower frequency. Okay, follow-up question. How is it possible that the RLC low-pass puts out more than 100% of the voltage that we put into it? Is it generating power? No, it's because we're taking the output across a reactive element, and it's a resonant circuit. So if you actually try to get signal out of there, then you'll be loading the uh, that element, and the transfer function is going to change a fair bit. Open collector comparators and, and transistor logic. So there's a chip element called the 311, and that's what we're going to be dealing with here. This is a way to get digital logic using op amps and BJTs rather than MOSFETs. So the plus terminal of the 311, if we give this a higher voltage than this, then we're going to have an output of high and if we give this a lower voltage than this, we're going to have an output of ground, of low. How does that work? Well, we've got this pull-up resistor here. Inside, there's actually an op amp flipped differently. So the 311 symbol has a similar symbol to an op amp, but it's actually made up of an op amp flipped the other way, connecting to the base of a, of a BJT. So when we give a positive voltage down here, then the BJT allows current to go through. When we give a negative voltage, then it does not, it blocks it. Okay, so with a, when do we get a positive voltage here? We get a positive voltage when this negative terminal to the 311 is higher than the positive terminal. So when we put a positive, when this voltage is greater than this one, then we allow the BJT to conduct, and that's why this goes low in that case. It opens up a channel to ground. Okay, so you can build transistor circuits using these uh, this kind of transistor-transistor logic. Here we've got the negatives pinned to 1.5, and this is going to implement an OR. So if this is high and this is high, then we should get a high there. That means they're both blocked. And sure enough, this pulls up to high. If only one of them is blocked because uh, the other one is a low signal, so let's say this one's low, then this one's blocked, we get high because we can't flow through there. And if this one is, uh, if this one is a low and this one's high, then flows through there, but gets blocked there. So still we've got infinite resistance from there to ground. So this gets pulled up to the high signal as well. Here is a not circuit implemented using that. You can analyze it the same way. Now an example, 
uh, here is an active voltage clamp. Explain the behavior of the circuit and how the output voltage depends on the input and what applications might this have. So note that this is not actually a 311, this is just a regular op amp question. Okay, so uh, here's how we analyze this. First, let's imagine that the output voltage, so like this input voltage, let's say that this is going to be uh, low. So it's lower than VREF here, and we've got the comparator giving us a very high voltage here. Now that doesn't conduct through the diode, so the diode can have whatever drop across this at once. No current goes this way, so there's no, uh, there's no feedback. And that means that since no current goes here, we just have V out is V in. Now, on the opposite end of this, let's suppose V in gets high enough that uh, this voltage becomes greater than this. Now the diode output or the, the op amp output swings to negative Vs, which is going to bias uh, forward bias the diode. So now we've got a 0.6 voltage drop across this and the negative feedback kicks in and will uh, will raise the voltage here until the uh, the voltage is just uh, is equal at this terminal and this terminal, which is going to show up with the which is when on the output we're going to have 0.6 volts lower than the. Uh, than the output here. So the output of the op amp is going to be 0.6 volts lower of the actual output, the out but the output is VREF. So what this does is it's a follower circuit, except uh, that it also stops the input from being v uh, higher than VREF. So that's why this is called a clamp. It clamps the voltage to not get any higher than this reference voltage. If the voltage wants to be lower than the reference voltage, go ahead, 